We thank you that you do hear and that you do answer. And uh, we give you thanks for all the prayers that you have answered, O oh Lord. And uh, we thank you for the te technology that allows us to gather on these uh, Wednesday nights on Zoom. We thank you for your word and for how it speaks to us. And we pray now again with the Psalmist 119, verse 18. Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things from your word. And then Psalm uh, 119, uh, verses uh, uh, 27, 34 and following. Um, give us understanding. And then uh, James uh, 122. Give us the grace to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, tonight, I want to continue to talk to you about the uh, ministry of the Holy Spirit. We st stopped last time. And uh, in view of the fact that we will not be uh, having a, a lesson on next Wednesday, we'll be devoting our time to prayer. I will make, uh, there are two outlines on the ministries of the Holy Spirit that my plan is to have them available for you on, on Sunday. So the things that I will share with you tonight, um, I will uh, make the outlines available. And so you, if you're going to be a church Sunday and can get the outlines, you really don't need to take any notes unless you want to. Uh, but again, we continue with the ministries of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and by the way, uh, our recommended book for the month of May will be 1 Corinthians. And uh, after our uh, day of prayer next Wednesday, uh, we'll start looking at um, uh, First Corinthians in our Wednesday night uh, Bible study. We won't try to study verse by verse, but um, chapter by chapter, more or less. But anyway, uh, that's the recommended book. And so continue to read and reread it. And I recommend that you read it in different translations. Now, the ministries of the Holy Spirit, now, number one, and, and there are many, more than we'll be able to cover tonight, but again, the ones that I don't cover, uh, you'll have them in the notes that I will make available uh, for you. And the first one is that I'd like us to um, look at, in addition to what we've already talked about, is the empowering uh, ministry of, of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us power to live the Christian life. We, we cannot be like Jesus without the Spirit of Jesus. And many times we're frustrated in our walk, in our attempt to walk with God, study the Bible, pray, and, and, and just a, a number of things. Uh, we're frustrated because we operate too much uh, in the flesh, in, in our own uh, power, our, our own uh, wisdom, rather than relying upon the empowering work of the Holy Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live the Christian life. Uh, Galatians chapter five, verse 16, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that word walk, uh, one, it's, it's in the active voice, which means the subject is performing the action. Two, it is uh, in the imperative mood, which means that it is a command. Uh, it is plural. And uh, it's, it's present tense, which means continuous action in the presence. The peripate, or uh, walk in the spirit and you will not. And, and not is, uh, translates a double negative. In Greek, there are uh, double negatives. Uh, ou, uh, O-U means not. In uh, M-E, uh, uh, me or me, modern Greek. It means not also. And so in Greek, you have double negatives. And a double negative means that it's, it's not possible for something to happen. It's just, it's not possible. And so the double negative means if we moment by moment, day by day, if we walk in the spirit of God, uh, it's not possible. It's impossible. It's not possible to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And when we do fulfill the lust of the flesh, it's because we're not relying on the Holy Spirit, we're not walking in the Holy Spirit, we're not dependent upon uh, the Holy Spirit. And so he empowers us, the Holy Spirit empowers us uh, to live the Christian life. The Holy Spirit empowers us to do the work of God 
uh, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And uh, John the Baptist, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 15, we're told that, that John the Baptist was in, empowered by the Holy Spirit of God to do uh, the things that he did and to preach the way that he preached. And then the Lord Jesus as man, we're told in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, Jesus says there, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And of course, he's quoting Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me uh, to preach the gospel to the poor and, 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 and so on. And, uh, and then in Acts uh, chapter 10, in uh, verse 48, we're, we're told there that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good. And so as man, even Jesus depended uh, in his human nature upon the uh, Holy Spirit of, of God. And, uh, and so the work of God, we, we cannot do the work of God effectively without the Spirit of God, without the empowering work of the spirit of god and he, emp he empowers us to preach and to teach uh first thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 first peter chapter 1 verse uh, 12 these these scriptures will be in your notes you can look at them later uh, he empowers us to to worship john chapter 4 verse 23 philippians uh, chapter 3 and verse 3 the holy spirit empowers us to witness in fact jesus said to the disciples uh, uh, tarry in Jerusalem, wait in Jerusalem until you be endued, uh, clothed with power uh, from on high. Acts 1 8, and you shall be witnesses unto me. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And so he empowers us to be witnesses. And so once again, uh, let's stop trying to do the work of God without the Spirit of God. We, we just cannot effectively do it. And, you know, one of the things that's happening today in, in, in many of, of, of uh, conferences is that people are being taught how to build a church without the Holy Spirit of God, uh, how uh, to have a church function uh, without the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, many churches uh, are doing a great job of, uh, of uh, uh, a building and so on without the Holy Spirit of God, but it's not the, it's really not a church of God. Um, uh, uh, the church of God to have power uh, to bring about changes in society and so on. And of course we're praying uh, for that. We're praying for revival and, and, and repentance and national repentance and so on. And uh, we need a work of the, uh, the, the Holy Spirit. And, and this, is what our, uh, this is what we need. This is what our land needs. And uh, uh, I think a, a commandment that all of us disobey more than any other command in the Bible is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be filled. That is, that is in the imperative mood. Pleruste. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's in the parity mood. It's in the present tense. It's in the uh, of course it's in the passive voice. Um, as we yield to the Holy Spirit, uh, He takes control of us. Uh, but it is again imperative mood. It's present tense, and and that is the key. It's present tense, which means moment by moment we're to be under His uh, influence. And it's plural. Uh, all born again believers are commanded to be under the influence. Uh, of the Holy Spirit of God. And, and again, that's a command that uh, we disobey more than any other. Uh, we were not, there are a lot of things we wouldn't say if we were under the control of the Holy Spirit. There are things we would not do. There are things we wouldn't think of doing if we were under the control of the Holy uh, Spirit of, uh, of God. And, 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 and we're, we're to be under his control all the time when we shop, uh, when we um, drive, uh, no matter what we, what we're doing no matter where we are uh, we're to be under his influence and, and again of all the commands in the bible i believe that that is one that i know for me <laughs> that's one that i disobey uh, more than 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 any other you know i'd like to be under the influence of the holy spirit moment by moment by moment by moment but i have to admit that there are some moments when when i'm not um uh, under his control and not where i'd like to be but what what do you do though what, what do you do what do you do throughout the day 
recognize, repent, and return. And so when you find yourself in the flesh, driving in the flesh, talking in the flesh, or whatever, you recognize, you repent, and you return to your walk uh, in the uh, in the Holy Spirit, and that is under His under His con control. And so the 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 Holy Spirit empowers us to do a number of things. And then number two, the Holy Spirit He teaches. And he brings to our remembrance the things that have been taught or the things that we have, have learned. He, again, one of his ministries is to bring to remembrance. And so the Holy Spirit cannot bring something to, to remembrance that's not on file. Uh, think of your mind as, as a tape recorder. And, of course, uh, memory has to do with recalling, uh, you know, pressing the right button to play or, or to bring up the recall, what, what you want to, uh, to remember. And the Holy Spirit aids in, in, in doing that. But we have to have information on file for the Holy Spirit to uh, bring it to, our, uh, to, our, to our, our remembrance. And one of the things I find very exciting each week as I meditate on the scriptures and as I prepare um, the, the scriptures that the Holy Spirit brings to my remembrance. But they're, they're on file. And uh, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. And, and many times I'm, I'm able to understand one scripture because of another scripture. But the Holy Spirit brings that scripture to my mind. And I find myself saying, oh, that's what that means. Now I understand. I understand that uh, for, for a long time, I, I, I used to wonder, for example, why did uh, Ahithophel, David's uh, counselor, um, why did he turn against David? Uh, Ahithophel became a part of the conspiracy to overthrow uh, 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 David, you know, when Absalom, uh, you know, turned against his father. And, and this was a, a lot had to do with neglect. And uh, David was a very, very poor father. And, and uh, but anyway, uh, I used to wonder, how is it that David's counselor, um, who, I mean, David saw him as an angel of God and his, his angel is his counsel as from an, an angel of God. And why did he turn against David? Well, when I, when I learned that Bathsheba was the granddaughter of, uh, uh was the granddaughter, was the granddaughter of, of, uh, of Bathsheba. When I understand that, and, and, and those of you who have grandchildren, you know how you are about your grandchildren. And uh, Hithophel never forgave David for what he did to his granddaughter. I mean, he broke up, had her, her husband killed and uh, impregnated and so on. And, and, and it, you know, if you, you, as a, if you put yourself, you know, as a grandfather, if you put yourself in Hithophel's shoes, you can, um, you can understand why he felt the way that he did. And, and why he did what he did. And so now I understand that, uh, why he did that. He turned, he turned against David. And actually, if his counsel had been followed, humanly speaking, uh, Absalom would have been victorious, but um, uh, Abs his, his counsel was not followed. And of course, he went out and hanged himself as a result of that. But if his counsel had been followed, if Absalom had done what he told, what, what he suggested, what he counseled Absalom to do, Absalom would have been victorious. Uh, and of course, David prayed, uh, God, uh, you know, uh, confused the <laughs> counsel of Ahithophel and so on. Uh, but, but anyway, my, my point is that, you know, when you, you compare scripture with scripture and, and you take one scripture. And, and when I saw that um, uh, 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 Ahithophel was the grandfather of Bathsheba, it just a lot of things made sense then. And I understood a lot of things. And then I could go on and on and on with, with, with things like that. Um, but uh, the Holy Spirit, he, 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 he teaches us and, and he brings to our remembrance. And this is why, you know, I pray you know, every Sunday, uh, Psalm 119, verse 18, uh, you know, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from your word. The, the Holy Spirit, he, he illuminates, you know, he, he has a ministry of illuminating. And that is... Uh, throwing light on, uh, bringing enlightenment, bringing uh, understanding, 
that is the work of the Holy Spirit. And, and how often do we, when we come to the word of God, how often do we pause and pray, open my eyes, open my understanding, uh, help me to comprehend uh, what I'm, what I'm, I'm, I'm reading and, and to co correctly interpret it and to rightly uh, divide the, uh, uh, rightly divide the truth. And, uh, and so he, 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 he teaches us, he uh, instructs us, he uh, counsels us, uh, he uh, make the Bible uh, clear to us, he brings to our remembrance uh, uh, things. And then he leads and he guides. He leads and he guides. Uh, John uh, chapter 16, verse 13, Acts chapter 8, verse 29, Romans 8, 14. And you need to write these verses down. I'm going to give them all to you. Um, um, and, 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 and the fact that he brings things to our, our remembrance is that that's in uh, John chapter 14, verse 26. Jesus there says, when he, the, the spirit is come, you know, he will guide you into all truth and he will bring to, to your remembrance whatsoever I have uh, said uh, unto you. And uh, then the Holy Spirit, he gifts us also. You know, we're, when we're born with natural uh, talents, with natural abilities. And uh, we all are born with talents to do, to do certain, certain things. And, uh, you know, sometimes I, I look at uh, people, I just look at, you know, people who do wicked. You know, people like, for example, that... Uh, uh, go into computers and, and and just do all kinds of evil things and you know you think what if these people would use their you know their talents for God uh, what if they did these things for the glory of God and, and this is why God gives us what he he gives us is every everything and everything is for his glory God does everything for his glory what is what is our what is our main purpose on for or to be on this planet it's God's glory and from Genesis to Revelation you see God doing things for his glory. What brings him the most glory? What brings him the most glory? And, uh, you know, what puts his attributes on, on display? Uh, what puts his grace on display? And in uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, uh, uh, Paul there says that, uh, uh, you know, God was gracious to me. I, you know, I was a blasphemer and, and I did this and I did that and I persecuted the church but the but god was gracious unto me and and he never got over that he never got over you know the fact that god was giving him something he did not deserve this man was was trying to wipe out the church i mean he was persecuting christians in fact on the road to damascus he had letters of authority he had to go down to damascus and arrest people who were calling on jesus and and to bring them bound back to jerusalem it's, i mean he was just just, just determined to wipe out Christianity, and 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 God had mercy on him, and 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 turned him around, and and, and saved him, and 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 again, why did God allow him to do all of those things? Why did God? Why didn't God stop him sooner? Why did He allow him to do the things that He did? He allowed him to do the things that He did to put His grace on display, and 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 Paul saw that, and that is why he gave his life for the gospel. He died. He died willingly. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, 6, 7, he said, the time of my departure is at hand. And, uh, you know, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness and so on. And then first, uh, and in Philippians rather, uh, 123, I'm in a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. 2 Corinthians 5, 8, to be absent from the body is to be present with the uh the, the lord uh, galatians 2 20 i'm crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ lives in me in the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself uh for me i mean he, he gave his life for the church because he could not get over the grace of god how how gracious god uh had been uh, to him and, 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 and so what, what was God doing? He was putting his grace on, on display. And, and, and when I see atheists, you know, I, again, I used to wonder, why does God allow atheists to, to blaspheme him and, and to keep breathing? Because the Bible tells us in a number of places, Job, Daniel, Acts, Luke 12, that God holds our very breath in his hands. He could stop us from breathing at any time. Anytime he wants, he can stop us from breathing. Why does he allow atheists to, believe, to breathe? Uh, to breathe? It puts his grace on display. 
it puts his long suffering on, on display. And in uh, uh, Exodus chapter 14, uh, God had uh, uh, Moses to, to uh, have the people to camp uh, in a certain place where there was no way out. Um, they could only be saved by God's intervention. And, and why did God do that? Uh, he said, God said, I want you to do this. I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. He's going to come after you, and I'm going to be honored today. Uh, I'm going to get glory today. I'm going to get glory from Pharaoh and from his hosts and, uh, and, and the children of Israel and so on. So why did he do it? To put his, to put his grace, to put his uh, power, rather, his attributes uh, on, on display. Why did he allow Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be put into the fiery furnace for his glory? And uh, if you read Daniel chapter three, you'll, you'll, you'll see the glory that God received as a result of taking them out of the fire or taking the heat out of the fire rather than preventing them from being put into the, the fire. And, and if you look at Daniel chapter six, you'll see the same thing. It, it, it's for his, uh, his, his, his glory. And so you see this throughout the scripture. Why, did, uh, why didn't Jesus heal, go and heal Lazarus while he was sick? Why, didn't he, why did Jesus allow him to die? Because there's more glory uh, in a in a resuscitation than uh, than than in a healing, and Jesus said himself, if you read carefully, uh, John chapter eleven, uh, he says, uh, you know, Lazarus uh, is uh, is sleeping, but I go to awaken him, and 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 death, uh, the body is the body that sleeps, and and Jesus said, I, he's asleep, I I'm going to go and and awaken awaken him. And, the disciples said, oh, if he's sleeping, he's doing well. And, Jesus, and then Jesus spoke plainly to them that, no, Lazarus is dead. But I'm glad for your sake. I'm glad for your sake. Because you're going to see, you're going to see the glory of God. This, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. For the glory of God. God's power is going to be put on display. Because Lazarus had been, was, was dead for four days. And, and as many of you know, uh, there was this belief among the Jews that, uh, you know, the, the uh, soul and spirit would seek to re-enter the body for three days. But after three days, decay would set in and or decomposition would set in and uh, the body, the uh, spirit, soul and spirit would no longer seek to enter. So in the mind of the Jews, there's no doubt that after four days, you're dead. <laughs> there's no doubt about it. And so Jesus allowed that to happen again. Why? The glory of God. In John chapter 9, there's a man born blind and the disciples ask, uh, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he's born blind? And Jesus said, neither. But that the works of God may be manifested, that, that God may be glorified. That's why this happened. And, and so God does everything for his glory. Why did he make the mountains? Why did he make the valleys? Why did he make the Grand Canyon? Uh, and and you, you see all this beauty in nature and so on. And in Israel, I don't know if those of you who, 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 who've gone to Israel, I don't know if you notice this, but there are places in Israel that will remind you of California. There are places that will remind you of Florida. And so you see a little bit of America in, in different places uh, uh, in, um, uh, in, in Israel. But, but why does God do all of these things? It's for his glory. Why does God, why, why does God save people? Why, why, why are we saved? Read Ephesians chapter one. It's very clear. Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one talks about the work of God the Father. And, uh, and after Paul describes the work of God the Father, he ends it with to the praise of the glory of his grace. He describes the work of God the Son in, in, in our redemption, in our salvation. And he closes the description with to the praise of the glory of his grace. He talks about the work of the Holy Spirit. He closes it out with the praise of the glory of his grace. Everything is for the glory of God. And when, when we understand that, that, that that is why we're here. And, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll ask my, I, you know, I'll pull in and I'll say, Lord, why am I here? You know, why, why am I here? Um, pancreatic cancer, very few people survive pancreatic cancer. Why am I here? And I, I and the answer is always, you, you, you're here to glorify God. That's why you're here, to put, God's, to put God on display. And when we understand our purpose and when we understand why we're here, it, it affects how we view things. It affects how we respond to things. It affects the decisions that we make is, is when we, when, when that is our mindset. 
and the uh, Westminster Shorter Catechism has it right. The, the chief duty of man is to glorify God and woman, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Not only to glorify him, but to enjoy him, uh, to enjoy him. That's the chief duty. So our, our main purpose for being here is, is for, for God's uh, for God's glory. Now, you know, I know you're not taking notes, but who remembers? <laughs> uh, okay. And so the empowering work of the Holy Spirit, the uh, teaching and uh, uh, bringing to a remembrance uh, work of the Holy Spirit, the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit, the, uh, and the gift in work. Yeah, the Holy Spirit gives everybody at least one gift. At, at the moment of salvation now we have talents that's that, that are, that's the moment of our natural birth but the uh, gifting everybody's given at least one gift you may be given more than that but this is a spiritual gift and this is given at the uh, uh new birth uh first peter uh, chapter 4 verse 10 uh points out that everyone is given a gift and i know the uh the authorized version, if you read it in the authorized version, I think it's it has the gift. The article isn't there uh, in the original. If you look at some of the modern translations, uh, it'll you'll you'll see clearly that everyone is given at least one gift. That's First Peter, uh, chapter four and verse twelve, and then First uh, Corinthians chapter twelve, verse seven. So at the moment of salvation, we're given at least one one spiritual gift, and that spiritual gift is given mainly for the edifying, the building up of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul points this out in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and uh, a few other places, and you'll, you'll see that uh, as, as you, you read uh, 1, 1 Corinthians. And, um, and so our, our, our gifts, uh, the, the only gift that, that, that's given for, for personal devotion or personal reason would be uh, the gift, the, the gift of languages, and so all, all other than that, all the gifts are for the body, for building up of the body of Jesus Christ, for edifying one another. That is the purposes, uh, purpose, of the, and, and of course for God's glory. And uh, th that pointed out, uh, Peter points that out also in in First Peter chapter uh, four, um, uh, verse ten, and uh, Paul also. In, in Romans um, uh, points this out also. And so there's the gifting work of the Holy Spirit. And how do you determine what your gift is? Uh, well, we could do a whole study on that. I believe that in the Petition to the Members class, there is a class on, on, on determining that. But just briefly is, is what is it that you do that encourages people? What is it that you do that, that, that edifies people, that, that builds up people? And, and what is it that, uh, that comes natural for you? And of course, gifts have to be developed. You know, you have the gift of teaching and preaching. I mean, you have to develop it, it, it and, and, and so on. You, you can have these gifts. So whatever your gift is, um, it, it, you know, it has to be, it has to be uh, developed. Uh, but uh, you can, and, and, and you can, the gifts are listed, by the way. Uh, most of them you'll find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and also Romans chapter 12. And then there are some in Ephesians uh, chapter 4 some in first peter chapter four but mainly in first corinthians uh, ch uh chapter 12 and in uh romans uh, uh chapter chapter 12 but uh find out everyone should know you should know what your spiritual gift is you know what is it that again what is it that you do that encourages people and uh what is it that you do that you know that that puts god on on, on display but again the gifts are given mainly for the edifying of the body of Jesus Christ for the building up of the church, and, uh, and just imagine how how strong uh, the church would be if people would use their uh, gifts, uh, you know, to to encourage one another, to strengthen one another, to build one another up, and so on. And then there is the fruit producing ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit produces the. Uh, fruit of the spirit and and uh, that's in galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 and there are there's actually there's, there's one fruit but there are nine facets or nine aspects of that of that uh, of that one fruit and interesting to note that the very first 
uh, uh, aspect or facet on the list is is love, agape, agape, love, joy, peace, you know, long suffering, uh, self control, uh, gentleness, and 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 so on. And Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty, "You will know them by their by their fruits, not by their gifts, not by their gifts." You'll know them by their fruits. And that's in Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse 20. And, uh, and then he goes on to say in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, that judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied gift in thy name? And we've done many mighty works uh, in your name, gifts. And, and then when I profess unto them, I never knew you, gnosko, which means to know intimately, to know by experience. I, I never knew you in an intimate love relationship. And then uh, that, that word gnosko is used in John chapter 10, where Jesus says, I know, gnosko, I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. And to the religious leaders, he says, you, you believe not because you're not my sheep. And in uh, John chapter 17, verse 3, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal, that they may know, in Osco, that they may know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou has, uh, has, has sent. Okay, I'll stop there. I believe we have a communion song. Is that right, um, Christine? Do you have a communion song? We do, but we're still having um, technical issues, so you can. You have it, okay. So you don't want to do it. Not tonight. Okay, great. No, great, because again, I got more here that I'm going to be able to. <laughs> yes. that yes. I'm going to be that I'm going to be able to cover. Okay, Pastor so, Malone, Minister yes. Deborah uh, Deborah Nelson was online for prayer. So if at any point you uh, have an opening and you want her to pray. Uh, please feel free. Oh, that's right. She was supposed to pray. Okay, we can do that right now. And then I will, uh, and by the way, what I'll do here is again, I have an, a number of more points here, but all of this will be, able, um, we're not going to put it online. And I have reasons for that, uh, not putting it online. But the, the, there are two outlines on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And these outlines will be available, uh, the Lord willing, on Sunday. And so they'll be on the information table, okay? And so go ahead, Sister Nelson, you go ahead and pray and then we will. We'll...